So I forgot my anniversary. So I've been working as a full-time developer for over a year now. I've been doing this YouTube thing for over a year now and I meant to film a video for that and did it when it happened. And I tried to film a video the last two days. I tried to vlog and talk about my experience over the past year and then it didn't work out due to some different crazy circumstances that happened at work on both days. So yeah, but I tried. See? Guys, I made a mistake. I forgot my anniversary. You can't go to work, Leah. You don't have a job. You don't have a job. So definitely first, I'd just like to say this past year on YouTube has been a wild, crazy, and fascinating ride with all of you guys. And I remember getting my first subscriber, which was me. I have multiple Gmail accounts and I logged into a different one and hit the subscribe button on my channel before I'd even posted a video. And then I remember the first time I got 100 subscribers and how happy I felt and then 500 and 1,000 and 2,000 and now up to 4,500 and it's just kind of a wild ride and I never expected really anyone to watch these other than friends and family and now I have videos with more than 30,000 views which is insane to me and I just want to say thank you so much for everyone who's stopped by the channel, who's watched my videos, who's supported me, left comments, liked, subscribed, all of that stuff because it really has motivated me to not just be a better YouTuber YouTuber and do more things and go out and buy a camera which is something that I've wanted to do for a really long time but also it's motivated me to be a better developer because I want to stay on track for you guys to help you out and to help people who were in my position over a year ago with no real direction on how to do what they want to do but know what they want to do so thank you so much and if you don't mind if you're here and you're watching this video feel free to leave a comment down below about when you subscribed like if you remember the number or if you remember how many months you've been subscribed feel free to leave that down below and whether you're from way way back when or you just subscribed yesterday i appreciate you with my whole heart and it's just a really good feeling and i'm glad you guys are here and i'm glad we get to hang out and yeah, I, I just appreciate it. Thank you. Anyways, I came up with a few things that I had learned over the past year working as a developer that I wanted to share with you guys. No matter how far along you are in your journey as a developer, mistakes happen and are expected. And that's even more true in your first year. That's okay. You just need to make sure that you learn from them and don't position them as something to fight over. But mistakes happen and learn and grow from those. They'll happen a lot your first year, they'll happen a little bit less your second year, but they'll happen when you're 10 years deep into this too. So just make sure you're always kind of growing with your mistakes. To piggyback off of that, you will never stop learning. I went to code school for three months and then started developing and I have been learning this whole year and everyone is always learning because there's always new technology and things change in the way that the internet works changes and it all changes so rapidly that you constantly have to keep pace or you get left behind. So no matter how long you want to do this, you'll be learning the whole time. That is great if you like to learn because you're always on your toes. Another thing I remember when I first started learning how to code, every time I was presented with a challenge or a task or something to do, I had this fear that I had no idea what I was going to do or how I was going to get it done. I thought that would go away eventually. To some degree it has, but there are still tasks that I get that I just have to think about for a really long time and my initial gut reaction is, there's no way that I'll be able to do this. And that comes with another feeling too, and that's the feeling that when you like get over the hump and you figure out how to do something, like when you come up with the idea to to make this thing work that you thought you would never come up with to work, there is only one feeling better than that, and that is when it actually works. Like when you actually kick it in the butt and get it to do exactly what you want it to do, that feeling of just pure joy doesn't go away either because there are still impossible tasks, so there are like impossible highs of feeling like you just like kicked this thing's ass. When you're a new developer, you do a lot of things in a lot of ways that some people are going to disagree with. 
when you're an experienced developer, you're going to do things in a lot of ways that a lot of people disagree with. And I've learned over the past year of development that a lot of people have a lot of opinions about the right way to do something. And not so many people have ideas or proofs as to why those are the specific right way to do things. I would say if you're at a job, then you should you know, do your job and code how they want you to code. But if you're first starting out or if you're, you know, working on a personal project, there are a thousand solutions for every problem and a lot of people like to tell you that there's only one right one and that just simply isn't true. And I've learned over the past year that however you decide that you want to do something, if it's wrong, it's really easy to tell that it's wrong but it's really, really hard to prove that there's only one right. And the last little bit that I wanted to share with you guys, and I've touched on this briefly before in different words, during your first year working as a developer are going to feel like the dumbest person in the room a lot. And that is absolutely okay because it doesn't matter, right? You have decided to take on this role and you're brand new. And so there's a lot of people around you who seem and probably are brilliant and it's okay to feel like you're behind. You can learn from them and you can grow and you're surrounded by smart people and that's awesome so you can become better at what you do. But there will also be situations where you're in a room where you may know more than people who have more experience than you because you've recently learned all of this new stuff. While development has tiers of developers, senior, mid-tier, junior, and you're just starting out, the rate at which technology changes allows for there to be nuance in that, where someone is both a complete expert in something and a perpetual beginner because things change so rapidly. You just coming fresh out of like learning this stuff may have a bit of knowledge of something new that even the most experienced person might not have. So you do hold value. You are worth the money that they're paying for you and they gave you a job for a very specific reason. So don't be discouraged by being the new person because you're still worth it. So those are just a few things that I wanted to explain to you that I've learned over the past year of making money to write code for people. It is a wild ride and I'm excited to see what changes during my second year of being a developer. I'm sure a lot will and I'm sure I'll be making another video like this in a year from now, hopefully like closer to my anniversary date. I'm like two weeks late at this point, so. If you have any questions about any of the tips that I shared or anything in general, as always, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you liked this video, hit that thumbs up button. They are super awesome and they make me smile. And as always, if you want to keep following along in this journey, hit that subscribe button because that is awesome as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you again very soon.